Hey, vehicle's clear of the stern. Copy that. Uh, you stole the point out towards the port side so you can come left. Roger. Coming left. <clears throat> the danger of coming left there is I'll come too far left. But uh, I go a little bit slower here than some of the pilots will because the guy hand over handing the tether on the back, if you go ripping back, it is, uh, as Paul knows, really difficult to mm -hmm. uh, manage that tether. So <coughs> now that I'm back, I have my auto heading on and I'm just driving forward. So the vehicle will swing around to the back by the time he gets it untied. But the bad thing is, if I'm too far out, how I am now, and I pull on it, it'll pull uh, Atlanta over. So I should really be behind the goalpost by now. Or Mark should wait till I'm there. <coughs> so <coughs> now he's taking the straps off of it. I'm gonna keep a taut tether, but not really, really tight. And I can come out of auto heading just for a minute and fly forward a little, and that will set my heading to where it needs to be, and then I'll click it back in. So what I'm watching now is for that tether slapping on the um, <coughs> on the water, and if I pull too hard, it'll start jerking Atlanta. And I'm keeping an eye on the ship, making sure it's not uh, going on a holiday. But I can tell that without looking at the nav screen just by the horizon and the bubbles in the water and position of Hercules. And Are we going to want to zero our 6, 8, and tether wraps? Yeah, you can do that now if you want. Tether 2? Yeah, Reg. So we get a half wrap in the tether when we launch Herc. So now I'm pulling on it hard. I'm giving it all I got. Uh, it's just uh, seeing the deck there and getting bashed about. So if you see in the wire cam, Atlanta's going to come back, get close to the back of the stern, so I'm pulling on it hard. <coughs> then once it hits the water, I'm going to slowly ease off, but I'm going to now start watching my uh, aft cameras. Yeah, I guess it's going down uh, in uh, Atlanta. Roger, Roger. Hercus, dive, dive, dive. And I'm going to turn on all Atlanta sensors and lights. Yep. <coughs> We're taking hits on the camera. And now, uh, bridge. We can, uh... uh stand by. Go ahead. Please confirm, you, you, you want us to, st to stay moving ahead until the ship yep. at 50 meters and then Roger. we go into DP, is that correct? Roger. Roger. Paul, turn on your depth sensor, please. Uh, which one is that? Atlantis depth sensor, peril. It's on. Really? Oh, I'm not getting, uh, yeah, that's why I'm not getting it. Yeah, I get no delta. I gotta go old school and use the GUI Delta. I'm not liking the mini Zeus right now. Yeah, around. Uh, stand by, Jeff. Let us get to 50 and uh, okay. Then we'll uh, catch our breath here. Watching some other, uh, I'm watching some other numbers up here. I can't, can't uh, deal with it at the moment. Sorry. Standing by. I got these little bitty numbers I have to look at now. I'm missing my big numbers. It may not be on. Paul, can you turn on Hercules USB L beacon? Turn on everything. 
Uh, it's USBLs on. On Herc? Yeah. Sea King? Should that be on? Yeah, that can be on. Um. Yeah, all Herc sensors are on. Roger. Atlanta camera down a bit more. Yeah, USBL is on, right? Ready for control. Hey, go ahead and bump it. Got it, thanks going off, cops. Copy that, thanks, Mark. I'm gonna take it. Uh, no, we're just gonna stand by here for just a second while we get our ducks in a row here. Bridge control, can you uh, just hold what you got there for a minute, Captain? <laughs> yeah, I don't want him to change heading yet. Continue down. Ready? Yep. About what speed do you want to be going? Um, should match my speed. Let's try 20 meters a minute. Okay, I'm happy guys, you can uh, do what you need to do with the ship. So, um, also what we did just did there, um, usually the ship shouldn't start, um,
This is Hercules Dive 1915. Universal time is 2008. Five, five. Mark. You have Herc's lights on, Dan? Okay. Uh, keep an eye on our Delta here. I'm still struggling with that. So, I'm going down at um, 25 meters a minute now. So, your job is to keep the Delta parked. So right now it's 20 meters. I'm 20 meters below oh. you, which we can see by the um, cable. Yeah, one Another. of the tells is the if you can't work it out here right away, we should be able to see Herc or Argus in one of those aft cameras. So you gotta go faster. Copy that. Hey, pilot video. Are uh, Herc's lights on? No, I'm getting to them. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. I just thought I was going blind here for a minute. You're not. Uh, Lights coming on. Oh, look, we got lights. We got lasers. Yay. I didn't want to deal with it at the moment because no, I, I was it. worried about ground faults, and I'm just looking at the uh, at the dummy light here and make sure everything's all green. You want to bump left so we're not looking at. Uh, What's that? You want to bump left, pan left. Copy. There you go. Get rid of our wonderful arm there. Beautiful. Trigger on Herc is not working. Yeah, Raj, you know where to look, don't you? Yeah, we should have hopefully checked that. Come a little faster, Paul. I'm still 20 meters below. If you pull up your utility page over there. This thing? No, on the right here on the bottom where it says utility. Mm. So that vertical velocity. It's the bridge here. Oh, that's where he is. Yeah. Can I lock the speed in? Are we doing that? Yeah, are you guys back row all on SPL right now? Listening anyway? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. 
Mm. Yeah, I have to like refresh that to. Hey, uh, pilots and navigators, are you guys on SPL and free, or are you? In yes, we are. We are on SPL. We got our hands a little bit full, but we are paying attention. Okay, great. I see our navigator is still uh, engaged, so we'll give it another minute, but then we'll turn it over to our SCF to uh, organize some introductions for the watch. Yeah, I'm usually going to be comfortable up here around um, 250 meters. By then, we should have all of our ducks in a row, and everything should be pretty much uh, hopefully going from here on out, uh, but it's not quite there yet. Roger. We'll wait a few minutes. I'm close. We are descending, yes. What's that? Yeah, this is locked up. Uh, I want to look at these numbers now, unfortunately. And Why did your velocity drop, Dan? I just came off of it for a second. Mm -hmm. So uh, my heading was coming around there. I didn't have, uh, I don't quite got my. Um, so the current, what's happening, Paul, the current swung us all the way around and then back and then the vessel's also changing its heading and starting to come underway. And I'm spoiled about with my Grafana here, looking at the ship speed. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I don't get it in any decent place. I got an eyeball over there and look like really closely. Speed over ground, 0.5. Wow, he's rocking it. So, microphone is not updating. I just refresh mine. Just a yeah, bit. I shouldn't have to do that. Yeah. I have to close this and reopen it. Oh, you kicked your speed back up. All right. Now it's updating. So our delta's not going to update here, which is confusing, but the ship speed over ground, I keep a good eye on. So he's doing 0.5 now. So that's dragging us back around. So what happened when he first started moving, I had my heading locked in. Mm -hmm. And as it started swinging Hercules around, my heading was locked over here. And we should be tail to tail there. And that's why it's nice to be able to see the. Yeah. But I should be back back in the box now. <laughs> and don't be afraid, but there's a navigator behind the console. <laughs> <laughs> Guess I should have my mask on, eh? We're not mask free yet. Not yet. Hopefully this afternoon. Jeff doesn't have the in my face camera on, does he? No, it's hiding back there. I was going to tweak it. Hey, pilots and nav on the on the vehicle nav screen. Is there an estimated time to bottom based on our descent rate? There is on the uh, on the utility screen that. Um, if you're looking at the Her Hercules GUI back there. Oh, okay, we'll just switch to that. Yeah. It's uh, time to bottom is 76 minutes and 10 seconds. 76 minutes and 50 seconds. So it's not exactly accurate, but um, our, our vertical velocity will change a bit. But at the moment, we're trying for 30 minutes, uh, excuse me, 30 meters a minute vertical velocity or one knot, whichever comes first. And the current depth is 370-ish meters, and our target depth is 2,500-ish uh, meters. I failed horribly at math, but I'm sure some of you back there didn't. So. Cool, got it. Thank you for that. Attention. 
Yeah, if you go to utility pole and enter a bottom depth of 2566, you'll, you too will have an app for that. So let's, uh, you got your auto payout engaged there. Let's strafe the gauges really quick. Just go through them as fast as you can. And yeah. So one, enter, two, enter, three, enter. Don't worry about writing them down yet. We'll write them down. Uh, we'll do the formal gauge check once we're at depth. But I'd like to um, know what they are now, and I'd like to keep an eye on them on the way down. <laughs> so uh, primary comp, good. High voltage comp, good. Motor comp, good. Motor comp a little bit warm because I was giving her there. Yeah, mm. craft comp should be also. That's just the craft arm. Craft arm is good. Uh, yeah, reservoir. I have a I have a readout here, so I don't really care about that gauge. Should I have a quick peek at the craft comp? Oh, where's the craft comp? Oh, uh, some one of those twenty buttons there. <laughs> yeah, craft comp. Good check. So I'll gauge check check. So uh, you can put that back on something to watch if you want to. That one's fine. But if we were going to have a problem, it would be tragic to not pay attention to that on the way down and then yeah. burn all that time. And uh, what are the readings on Argus now with this like double res and those yellow stripey lines? Like, What am I actually looking at? So you're looking at the volume there, which is... Uh, the same as the craft comp. So, you know, when we look at the craft comp and we see some number between zero and some arbitrary number, right? Yeah. Uh, zero and eight. So those marks that you saw are halfway hmm. volume, volume wise. So it's a two point, or sorry, it's a 1.8 liter comp, something like that. Van, this is Lounge, we can hear you. So um, you're watching the volume there. So they've dropped about, um, you know, they're about a third full now. I would like to see them a bit more, but as long as you can see those white pistons, we're good. Got it. This is the lounge. Can you hear us? And where do I check weather? Can you hear us? Uh, um, if you... Why aren't you talking on yeah. SPL? And then on... Now go back to that page. Oh, I was just going to open a new one. This is the lounge. Can you hear us on SPL? Yeah, Weather Watch 2. Yes, we can. Okay. Pilots can hear you from the lounge. Thanks. Hello, hello. All green lights up here, except we don't know where we are. The Navigators are madly troubleshooting. They're pushing lots of buttons up here. <laughs> it's like three of them. They still can't figure out where we are. Somewhere in the North Pacific, we know that depth of approximately 500 meters. What they are doing, and uh, <coughs> to be serious, they're um, they're troubleshooting the USBL on Hercules. They do have uh, position in uh, transponder mode, but our responder, so where we send a trigger down to the beacon on Hercules, and it chirps. And we get the responding uh, echo on the uh, USBL on the ship. That part is not uh, not happy. Hey, it's happy now. Oh, now we know where we are. So Rennie is up here. He's playing around with um, responder versus transponder mode.
Okay, Paul, you remember how to operate that uh, craft manipulator? A little bit. So <laughs> we can lose the big book now. And I forgot to bring the red book up here. So I like to bump it on the way down. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so it should have telemetry now. And you can either put it in your lap. I like to operate it right there from my seat, but it's dealer's choice. Make sure we don't pull any wires out of the console and make the lights go out up here. I'm always ready for a riddle. Riddle me. Transponder mode right now. Right. Just on Nav G, but not on the Sonardyne. interesting it could be Breadcrumb, Rennie, might be. We haven't run in this configuration with uh, Herc and Atalanta, and I don't know. Maybe there's an impedance mismatch. No, they, there's a separate trigger for each one, right? It could be. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. So, yeah, it could be something to do with the course wave division multiplexer in Atlanta versus Argus. Um, could be something to do with the trigger um, gizmo that Robert has up here. The way to work that out would be um, get a scope out on the deck and uh, you know, see what the see what the trigger's doing with the two. So we we could look at both of them with a dual trace scope, and they should. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Well, the so. Um, Argus and her, uh, sorry, Atlanta, that's going to take a while. Atlanta and Hercules both run on their own fiber and their own MUX. So there's no, there's no goes into, comes out of, through, it's not in series, they're in parallel. So I would, I would think it's topside. One thing you could do is, um, can you disable the, the trigger to Atlanta and try Hercules only? And that Either way. That or the beacon that we've put on Atalanta is not the one you think it is, and it's interfering somehow. No, that's all fine. That's all fine.
Still scanning, Paul? I'm mm -hmm. kind of half watching here. Yes, it does, yeah. So it, it seems happy now with you're in responder mode for Hercules and Atlantis off. Is that correct? Correct. That's a very subtle. So there's something in the trigger line on Hurt. Oops. Right. You ready, Paul? Yeah, for the arm. Yeah, so I'm going to turn the craft valve on. There's that mini Zeus glitch again. Yeah, I was noticing the, uh, you can see the cable on the Atalanta cam is uh, bouncing around quite a lot. Yeah. Why are you blaming my cable routing? <laughs> okay. Did you not zip tie that, Dan? Clear for, uh, it is bouncing around quite it a bit. It is bouncing around. But I have it tagged between the connector and the camera body, so it's not dynamic a lot on the fiber connection. Yeah, it's definitely taking heads. It's not happy. So uh, what are my buttons here again, Dan? Uh, uh, this one yeah, starts so, it? Yeah, so if anything goes pear-shaped, uh, you're going to want to hit the blue button to turn it off. And yeah. then the button on the very end is the that will make it uh, live or freeze it. Got it. And the button on the left is the jaw lock button. The button on the right is the wrist rate or continuous, which we usually have in continuous, how it is now. Mm -hmm. um, when you first hit the hydraulics on, you're going to want to hold the jaw closed with your finger, and that should alleviate it from snapping open when you give it the hydraulic juice. So, yeah. Yeah, beautiful. And then I can just do grip lock, and now I can let go of that? Uh, correct, yeah, if you want to keep your jaws closed. So now I can take it out of halt and uh, move it around. Yeah. Am I clear? Clear. Is scoop uh, not magnetized? The scoop is on a bungee now, so we can't lose it. Oh, okay. It's really embarrassing. And we're on Mach 4 now uh, when we do lose it. The magnet is um, it's meant for quick stowage in between launch and recovery, or in between uh, operation subsea, but it's not really good for launch and recovery. We tend to forget about it on the way up. And How many have we lost? Uh, this is number four, I believe we're on uh, now. Uh, ooh. <sighs> Zeus is not happy. We'll have to dig it out of there, but I don't want to do it while we're while we're descending, so we're still uh, troubleshooting nav and trying to keep all the other.
Not at all. You can interact with the uh, craft predator and the telestrator <laughs> in the one. So. The telestrator doesn't uh, go onto our screens here in front of us, so it's the top two screens are are all for the back row. Okay, gotcha. That's good to know. So yeah, we don't. If anyone up here is complaining, they're looking at the wrong screens, and their neck will be hurting. So looking up. Why don't you try it again? No, there it is. So it is also going out on the sat feed, Dwight. What's that? The telestrator's going out on the sat feed as well. Oh, yeah. We can lose it. But oh, I didn't know that was true. It is, is it? I can change it. But no, it, that's cool. But it, typically we leave it on because we'll be talking about something and the folks at home can't see that we have the telestrator. So. Yeah, yeah, that's great that uh, that goes out, yeah. Yeah, we had, we've had requests uh, from the beat several times to, what are the scientists talking about? Because uh, we uh, rely on the telestrator quite a bit. I don't know how we ever lived without it. We had a stick up here to point at the is screen. Is the stick still over there? Yes, it is. Yeah, the stick's still over there. Sam had it out on the last cruise when we were rebooting the telestrator. And okay, Paul, let's uh, stow that thing out getting just above you a bit, and you're robbing my yeah, five yeah. of my 20 horsepower there. So we'll just bump it a couple times every probably 500 meters or so, and that will uh, equalize the pressure in the linear actuator. So when Got you it. stow that thing, pitch way up. Which one is pitch? Pitch the is your wrist. Uh, it's this one. Like this? Y yes, sir. So, and then all you have to do is bring the shoulder all the way up, and then you can hit the blue button once the shoulder's up. You don't have to bring the elbow in close to the linear actuator. Remember the shaft that we were polishing? Mm -hmm. So when you stow with your pitch down, the jaws will contact the, the shaft. So just like this and then hit it? Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. And then as you notice, when you hit it, it'll give a little twitch, but it'll, it'll usually relax into a decent position. And you can leave that thing right there if you want, or you can move it out of the way. It's up to you. Cool. Thank you, sir. Awesome. So um, I failed to bring the red book up. You can uh, grab a sheet of paper or something, and we'll keep a note of things that we want to hand over. Roger. Uh, you can also do that in the dive log if you want. So one of them, um, uh, let's note it in the dive log. So we're seeing a glitch on uh, Zeus. And we also have a, a very subtle mystery with the Herc uh, responder trigger. Those all, if you want, you can just get a piece of paper, and uh, or you can go down and get the red book if you want. Yeah, are we clear for... Yeah, sure, I'll keep an eye on it. Oh my gosh, you're going to multitask me big time. <laughs> we'll see if I can keep it together for a minute. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So any... Any prognosis there, or it's still a mystery? Did you change the uh, interval? Like how often it's triggering? Interesting. So basically we're running in uh, Acoustic mode, or transponder mode. Roger. We should reach the bottom in approximately 55 minutes. And then we'll have to do some um, stuff. Uh, we'll white balance the manipulator. We'll bring uh, Atlanta around to look at uh, Hercules, assuming the 
Mini Zeus this behaves. Uh, what else do we do? We do a full uh, formal gauge check on the vehicle, kind of a health check on bottom health check. So that sets a baseline for the dive. Uh, it's changing as we descend. Uh, the compensators are um, cooling down, plus they're getting uh, the effects of the ambient pressure. And there it went. No. We think it's our, uh, the fiber whips kind of dyna dynamic. Yeah, Let's try this. Paul's blaming my rigging there. <laughs> so the two issues we have for the red book so far are um, we're running Hercules in uh, transponder mode. Uh, there is um, an unknown issue with the um, USB L trigger on Hercules. And uh, the other one is um, the, we're seeing a glitch on uh, Mini Zeus. Rather annoying. Dan, can you define what uh, responder mode means for us? Does it uh, mean we'll have um, poor tracking on the vehicle, or? Uh, yes, sir. Can define that. So yeah, and uh, typically we run the um, the both vehicles in responder mode. So we're sending an acoustic trigger down the fiber, and that uh, makes the beacon chirp, and uh, then the USB head knows when it should exactly when it should listen. And we're having a really puzzling issue with uh, when we are tracking Hercules in uh, responder mode. There's some appears to be some sort of delay which causes Hercules to appear on the navigation screen about uh, 100 meters away from where it should be. And uh, so when we have two ways of tracking the vehicle, we can also go in uh, acoustic mode or um, transponder mode where we don't send a trigger. The USB L head sends a chirp down to the beacon on, on Hercules. The beacon on Hercules receives the chirp and then replies. So basically the, the uh, trip time for the acoustic signal is doubled in that fashion. So it... Gotcha. In, in theory, won't be as... Um, is accurate in the scheme of things, but but once we're on the seafloor in in Doppler mode, I guess as long as we get a good estimation for its position relative to Atalanta, I guess we can correct set things that way and follow. Correct. Yeah, yeah. it um, you'll get an accurate position in in uh, acoustic mode. It'll just it'll take longer. So if you take more average hits, so if you sit there for two minutes versus a minute. Um, you'll get a what we call a smear on the nav screen, so you'll get a whole bunch of hits, and then they can use the the average of those uh, returns to um, to home the DVL, and and then as long as we maintain altitude with the DVL, we'll we'll have a, a pretty good idea where we are. Roger that. Thanks for the update. Hey, since we're all sort of settling into our watch positions now, uh, let's turn it over to our science communication fellow. Milana, you want to say something? Yeah. Can you guys hear me over here? Yeah, we can yep. hear you. Yes. All righty. Aloha, my call. I'm very excited. This is my first um, exploration with all of us. Um, I'm going to let Dwight talk a little bit about what we're doing here and the mission for this exploration. Yeah, thank you. So uh, we're all very happy to be in the water and descending the ROVs down to the seafloor. Uh, this is uh, Hercules Dive 1915. Uh, we are on the Lilaklani Expedition NA 138. Uh, this is the first official dive. Uh, we tried to do a dive last night and ran into some difficulties, so we had to cancel that and uh, we resumed this morning. So we are challenged with some weather situations and current situations, but uh, 
all was good for the launch, and uh, we're heading on, on down towards the seafloor. We've gone, uh, well, I think well past 1,000 meters now on our way to a total depth of about 2,566. We are on the southern flank of King George Seamount. Uh, we're going to do about a 14-hour dive um, and transit from about 2566 meters yeah. up to Great. up to maybe close to 2000 meters uh, depth and along that dive transect we'll be uh, collecting samples so we're um, very interested in characterizing the uh, the geology and the biology the of the seamount and uh, one of your logs and we'll be we collecting rock samples and collecting um, animal samples to help us better characterize uh, the environment uh, here and we're very curious about the age of these seamounts and the nature of these uh, critical mineral crusts that um, may be um, encrusting some of the rocks in this area, and we're uh, very interested in um, uh, understanding the the volcanic origin of these seamounts and their geochemistry and, and sort of nature, and uh, trace that to what hot spot on the Earth's uh, on the Earth's crust that uh, erupted uh, probably something like 80 million years ago to form this this seamount. So. That's some of the goals of the dive. Um, we, we will be on watch with the 8 to 12 only for about a half an hour of bottom time, and we'll turn it over to the 12 to 4 watch. Uh, but I'll turn it back to you, Milani. Thank you. Um, thank you for that brief overview of what the goal is for this voyage. And now I want to, um, I'll go first. And what, what I want us all to do is I want us to, let's, let's say our name. We'll say our position, and then when if you, and then when you say your position, I'm gonna try and um, explain what your position is in Hawaiian. So I'll I'll just well, after you say your position, I'll say the Hawaiian name, and then I'll let you take back over, and then you can tell us like maybe where you're from, and then we'll pass it on to the next person. Okay, so I'll go first. My name is Malanai Kane Kuahibi Nui. I am a science communication fellow slash educator. And in Hawaiian, that is a kumu ike or a mea haimo olelo. And I am coming from Oahu in Kahalu'u. Yeah, I'm going to hand it right to my friend that's sitting right next to me because I, I make eye with him. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ryan Gasparo. I'm part of the science team here. I'm a biologist. And in Hawaiian, that would be a kanaka epekema or akiaka mai. And you are from? I am from Temple University in Philadelphia, where I'm doing my PhD. <laughs> Amazing. Awesome. Why don't you tag someone that can? All right. Over to you, Dwight. Yes, I'm uh, Dwight Coleman. I'm also one of the scientists on this watch. Uh, I am also the expedition leader and watch leader for this watch. And I am a geologist from the University of Rhode Island Graduate School of Oceanography. Awesome. In Hawaiian, Dwight would be the Kanaka Epekema or Akiaka Mai. And because he is the expedition leader, he would also be the Alaka'i. Awesome. Thank you. Can you tag someone, Dwight? Yeah, you bet. Fiona? Uh, can you guys hear me? I can hear you. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Fiona. I'm the ocean science intern slash data logger. Yes. And um, I'm currently, fr I'm from the island of Saipan in the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands. I'm a student at the University of Guam studying biology, and I'm also a coral restoration and marine monitoring technician. In Hawaiian, Fiona's position would be a haumana, or a hu'ea o, or a uh, kanaka epikema and akiaka mai. Thank you so much, Fiona. Why don't you tag someone? Let's hand it over to the navigation team, Kitoshi. Can you hear me? Uh, stand by your back row. We're, we're talking uh, technical goo-goo up here. Okay, so I'll hand it over to Jeff. Stand by one. Uh, I am Jeff Dunnerline, the video engineer, lead video for this particular expedition from Portland, Oregon. Um, I have no degrees. I've done a lot of TV. Thank you so much, Jeff, and Hawaiian. And if you can put that in Hawaiian, that'd be impressive. Yes, so what, we ha what I have on my paper here is um, 
You would be a Kanaka Paivikio. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. And um, I think you're going to have to take a pause here because we're uh, trying to figure out, as Dan was explaining earlier, some of the positioning you'll, systems on the You'll vehicles. probably have to teach us again the proper pronunciation for some of these, and we'll learn by the end of the expedition. <laughs> Yeah, the pilot and the navigator are engaged in deep conversation right now, so we don't want to bother them too much. They've probably gone off SPL. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, we'll be standing by um, until we, so we can give our navigation team the air to suss out whatever they need to figure out. Thank you everybody, keep watching. Hopefully there's some fun things that make their way in the blue screen. Mahalo. Good. Uh, navigators are still pushing buttons like crazy up here, but they have resolved our uh, transponder-responder issue. They have adjusted the turnaround time on the beacon and um, some other magic that I couldn't even begin to explain. But the short story is it's working. Hey, there are heroes. Awesome. Yes. Um, it's quite complicated uh, black magic when you start sending sound through the water and especially nowadays that it's digital, so there's just pure magic there, and there's uh, <laughs> a lot of settings on that two machines, three machines that they're using to uh, figure out where we are. We tease them once in a while I'm on the Navigester thing, but they really are quite, have been quite busy up here, and uh, yeah, we know where we are now. We think we know where we are. <laughs> <laughs> Never quite sure. Never quite sure. That's why it's exploration. Uh, by the way, I'm Dan. I'm sitting in the uh, Herc seat up here. I'm the bus driver, whatever that is in Hawaiian. Awesome. So the bus driver in Holala, Hawaii would be, um, hmm, there you are. You're Pailaka Mokulu'u or um, Mokulu'u Kia Awaya. Thanks, Dan. Oh, my pleasure. Sitting next to me. Yeah, I can hop on next. My co-pilot. Uh, my name is Paul. I'm an ROV pilot for the Argus Atalanta system. And in Hawaiian, you would be a Pailaka Mokulu'u or Mokulu'u Kia Awaya. They, uh, I guess our official title is ROV pilots, but we're really technicians. We've uh, we've had a bit of a late night last night, so we're really grateful to be uh, sitting here in the front row enjoying the blue water. Um, the challenge, this is the easy part of the job for us. The challenge is uh, to keep these machines in operational order and uh, get them in the water. Uh, last night, uh, both all three, all three watches put in uh, a little bit of overtime and um, did an awesome turnaround on the system. We had to replace the main um, AC power cable that goes into the electronics bottle on Hercules. It had a uh, had a ground fault in it, which is basically like the uh, the outlets in your kitchens or bathroom, where there's a little button in case you get water on your electricity. Uh, we had water on our electricity, which is typically bad. <laughs> And uh, the especially when we're surrounded by water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, there's a lot of cables and connectors on the ROVs, and they're they're uh, we're forever chasing uh, ground faults, as we call them. And uh, some of the cables are dynamic, where they get moved about quite a bit, and they uh, just like an old extension cord you've had hanging around in your garage, and you've dragged it around the yard and used it with your weed whacker. That kind of happens to our cables. And, The scary part <coughs> about last night, we had to get into our one atmosphere bottle, which we, we really don't like to do at sea. Uh, but the, the 12 to 4 shift just crushed it, opened the bottle, changed the cable, put the bottle back together, made sure all the O-rings weren't going to leak, pulled a vacuum test on it, backfilled it with nitrogen, and 
I woke up and everything was ready to go. We were waiting <laughs> on the weather. Perfect. Roger, thanks, Randy. So I think our navigators have finally caught a breath. They can uh, jump on SPL and talk about what you guys are doing up here. Hi everyone, I'm Katachi. I'm a navigator. Uh, we're just troubleshooting the turnaround time. So we found out there's an issue with um, uh, the, the turnaround time for Hercules defaulted to a, a value it normally shouldn't be. And that just means um, how much time it takes for the acoustic signal to go from the ship uh, to Hercules and then back, because um, that's how we track where it is. Um, so if, if the expected turnaround time is different, then the vehicle is going to show up in a different place than it actually is. Great explanation. Thank you. Talking to Nav or to Oh man. Yeah, you base you gotta Thank you. So the Hawaiian word for the navigator would be Ho'okele. And then because you guys are the navigators of our ROVs, you guys would be like Ho'okele Mokulu'u or like Ho'okele Mokulu'u Kia Owaya. That's you know it's kind of long. Yeah. <laughs> well, we make it work. <laughs> Good job. Are you guys ready for some of the comments that I've been flooding in while you guys are doing all the things? As long as they're about science and not a technical nature. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Stump the pilot. I'm, just, I'm joking. But. Cool. Yeah, we're ready. We're ready. I yeah. want to highlight some of the, the these awesome comments that I really like. This one is, says, um, thanks videographer for the video change on channel three. I like seeing the front wall, the front row work their magic. So. What? Wait a minute. We're on camera. <laughs> <laughs> what? Thanks, Jeff. There's actually a little secret hidden camera right in front of Dan's face that <laughs> always seems to be conveniently hidden behind a monitor. It actually looks well, like. It's actually that's not me. That's uh, that some of the like, other crew. It looks like that right now, but if you wait a second, oh, peekaboo! <laughs> Dan can my uh, that probably needs some adjustment a little bit. Roger. Some of our other pilots do not like do not this like camera. That. I'm yeah. a bit of a narcissist that you haven't figured that out. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, now you can see Dan playing cameraman as well as bus driver. And it's, uh, that's that's pretty good. And now, now if you think that you're um, you're uh, hidden in the back row, there's also that camera in the back row. You probably <laughs> can't see, but there's Dwight playing his NFL coach routine. <laughs> so uh, yeah, got cameras all over the place. Awesome. The crowd loves the cameras all over the place for sure. Um, another. Um, question comment was um, what are the creatures that we're expecting to see down where we're going oh yeah what are we gonna see down here that's a really good question um, so we're expecting to see um, hopefully a lot of corals and sponges on the hard substrates we find on the seamount um, along with a lot of things that are associated with those corals and sponges um, so things like crustaceans um, sea stars, anything you can imagine. And um, we know from the past expedition that things really vary from seamount to seamount. So um, we're going to see a lot of different things, I think. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, here's a, another comment from a past crew member that I feel like saying. So he says, hi, team. So glad to be back. After 20 days of mapping in 2021, you finally get to explore. Must be exciting from Jason, if you guys know who that is. <laughs> OK, here's another question. Um, why are we flying Atalanta? Ah, 
knew that one was coming. <laughs> uh, basically because I blew up Argus, so we had, <laughs> we had to switch in at Atlanta. I'm really sorry for that. I, uh, I, I plugged the wrong thing into the wrong high voltage thing and apparently let the smoke out. And so uh, I did that the night before we were sailing, so uh, in the interest of uh, getting to a diveable system, we we uh, decided to swap out swap out the vehicles. <coughs> We've been having uh, some issues with the with the thrusters specifically on on uh, Argus. They're electric thrusters. They run off 160 volt DC, and they have a controller made by Teledyne, so they work basically like an electric bicycle or an electric skateboard. And uh, so they take um, DC voltage and uh, create a uh, AC sine wave to get a variable speed motor. And um, they're quite complicated little things and uh, they're a bit finicky. Thank so you. We, w we went from, uh, on the last cruise we had one working thruster and uh, we went from one to none, and uh, we need at least one to maintain uh, maintain heading and provide that uh, eye in the sky view with the second ROV, which is now Atlanta. Thanks, Dan. I'm so glad that we always have um, these backup machines and backup parts to fall back on. I like this question because I feel like everyone might be able to answer this question in their own way. Uh, what is an animal you're personally hoping to see? Um, I'm excited personally to see a lot of the different coral species. There's a type of black coral that they saw a lot on NA-134 called Iridogorgia that um, sort of looks like a firework suspended in midair. Um, I'm hoping we see a few of those. And what about you, Fiona? Oh, sure, uh, why not? I, I like uh, siphonophores. I think they're really beautiful and, and cool, but I don't know much about them. They're a colonial animal, right? They're yeah, frightening. They are. Frightening, my man, they scare me. <laughs> On the top list of edge of my seat every time I see one of those. I yeah, think. the pilots don't like them much. <laughs> they, they entangle. <laughs> Um, so I'm not really too sure what the scientific names are for these creatures, but I'm more excited to see those deep sea sharks and how they <gasps> work down there. I'm only, I've only ever seen like reef sharks, so it's going to be pretty cool to see oh, those oh, freaky shit. things. <laughs> Anyone in the front row really excited to see anything, any animal in particular? Um, I'd be pretty stoked to see a nautilus. Is that something anyone's ever seen here? I guess they're, they, you know, they float in the water column sometimes. They can adjust their own buoyancy. It's really cool. Can you bring up your alarm page again and, and tell me how long it takes for the, uh, for that to update? Uh, last heard from three seconds ago. Roger. Now we're chasing another pesky ground fault up here. Just updated. Just updated. Well, it's uh, several hundred k ohms, so kilo ohms, so it's not a hard ground fault. But I'm gonna turn off a few more of the likely suspects here, so you might see some of your cameras uh, go wonky. How about now? Uh, four seconds. Uh, bottom left. Four seconds. So it, it updated? It updated, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Okay, I'll turn those back on. It does not appear to be any of those. I'm really hoping to see, uh, we haven't seen many octopus in the last, uh, I don't think I've seen one, I don't think I saw one the whole last uh, cruise. They're, uh, they're my favorite as well. Um, 
what do you want to do next, Paul? What instrument should we? Can we live without for 15 seconds? Mm. How about the. Uh, what's that? Yeah, any of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's the Doppler off. Still waiting on the update. Yeah, the longer it takes, the more likely it's that suspect. Yep, just updated. Bang. And it's gone. Wow. Yeah, so Hercules has uh, been around for a while now, and some of the components on there are still original, so we kind of have an idea what to what our problem children are and what, what to look for. So in this case, we have a, appear to have a ground fault on the TVL, Doppler Velocity Logger. I'm going to turn it back on and see where that goes. Hercules does not like to sit on deck for extended periods of time, so the first dive is always uh, a bit more of a handful than subsequent ones. We get a few bugs that we have to work out. Yep, that's definitely it. Should make a note in the log for that one. Yep, just did. It's gonna be a long handover. <laughs> I like the everything is good, see you later, bye. Yeah. <laughs> uh, still good. For now, we're um, at 1,500 meters, and I think at this point we're more worried about wind than swell so far with weather. I could be wrong about that, but um, oh, you are correct. Yeah. No, no big spikes or anything. So now I'm going to leave the uh, the DBL off for for now until we get down to the bottom. So. Uh, that's what goes in that comes out of your uh, nav G there as well. You're going to get a red light there on the DVL com. Do we uh, need to kick the arm again? Yep, or let's, let's do it. Let's see if that is happier. Let's see, stand by. I'll give you... What am I doing? Pressing a button. <laughs> so... Two of them, actually. Yeah, but we'll wait there so your red light should go green there for telemetry and power to the uh, manipulator. Which may also cause our ground fault monitor to scream a little bit. And that's going to be this calm. Correct, button. yeah. Yep, about calm. Can you guys remind me of a few things? What are, what are the ranges on the two sonars? Uh, the one on the left is typically set to 100 meters that's on uh, currently on atalanta and so the the target or the range rings there are 20 meters per division and the one on the right is uh, hercules and that's typically set to 50 meters so you have 10 meter range rings gotcha perfect and then there's another one of, uh, in front of us here and it's currently set to 20 meters so it's got uh, five meter range rings and the, the one here in front of us is uh, great when we're really close to a vertical wall. We we rely on that quite heavily. To oh, yeah. What's that display called if we want to pull it up back here? That is the engineering PC. So it's currently displaying the uh, Tritec sonar, which is mounted on uh, low and forward on Hercules. And the top right is the, uh, the winch tension oh, there um, it is. Nice. program yeah. that we're monitoring. So you can see that our max tension so far has been 8,262 pounds. Hey, Dan, the uh, ground fault is now at 11 kilo ohms. It was yep. previously 70. Yeah, that's good. OK, I'm going to turn on the, let me rack the camera back and give you a view first. I'm going to turn on the hydraulics and we'll give her a whirl. Ah. And is that lower left sub button profiler functional, or was that Correct. Yes, it is. Oh, it's on Atlanta. And it should be set to 200 meters. Good idea, Dwight. Okay, that, ready? That probably yep. picks up bottom first. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. It's our uh, it's our farthest reaching one. Do I wait for the hydraulics, or that is the blue button? That is the blue button. I'll be ready on this one, and just in case it gets a mind of its own, which it occasionally does. 
While you're doing that, I'm gonna set your uh, sub bottom profiler here. If I can. And do we just kick it just to like run yep. it, or do I? That, that should be good. So we typically have this guy set for 200 meters. I think it's on Nav's checklist. You see the navigator squinting over your shoulder. They're looking for the <laughs> for the bottom. Do you want me to kill a uh, craft? Part of my reason powers. for the questions is for, <laughs> for refreshers for everyone. <laughs> yeah, we have a plethora of instruments up here to uh, tell us when the seabed is approaching before we slam into it at one knot. Um, the sub-bottom profiler can see the furthest, and that's on... Uh oh, wait a minute. I'm confused. That's on Argus, which is sitting on the deck, so that's probably not going to read the seabed too well. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering. <laughs> Why is that even on? The blinky light's not So blinking. I guess we have, what, parascientific uh, altimeters? Is that... Or, uh, or sorry, um, that's the depth deucer, right? Yeah, we have... We, you're correct. We have the parascientific uh, depth sensors, and uh, so we're, we're relying on... Uh, on the awesome uh, Nautilus um, multi-beam system to to know wh where the seabed is. So we have a really good idea just based on our depth. There's also altimeters on both vehicles. And uh, the other one that uh, we have is the sonars on both vehicles. So uh, we should start seeing some ground return on the, on the sonars. And one of the things I'm looking for as we come down is uh, where the hill is or the cliff. So we typically want to keep, uh, in this case, Atalanta in the deeper water behind Herc. So I'll start uh, eyeballing that and adjusting the vehicle positions as, we, as we're coming down. So uh, we're ready to rock and roll when we hit the seabed. Yeah, this dive is going to put us down kind of on the crest of a ridge, so we should, um, there'll be a, a, a slope to the ridge um, sort of northerly, but the steeper sides will be off the flanks down to the our sort of east and west. And uh, the idea is to stay on the top of the ridge, but if we see cool things on either side, we'll dip down and follow that instead. Awesome. Yeah, we love, uh, <coughs> we love the vertical. It's just, it's... It's one of the great things about this system is to be able on a side of a very steep cliff or just at the top of it, and that's where all the uh, all the fauna typically likes to hang out, on one side or the other. Also, just a heads up, we are about 20, mini 20 minutes from the uh, bottom. Roger, 20 minutes to go, approaching 2,000 meters. How are the gauges, Paul? I'm still happy. Yeah. Checked them like 15 minutes ago. We should have, uh, if we do everything right here, we'll, once we get to the to the bottom, uh, have some patience with us back row. We have to, um, I'll try and do it a little before, but we have to uh, position the vehicles according to the bathymetry. Uh, we'll do a white balance test for uh, Jeff for the for the Zeus camera, which involves getting the manipulator out and focusing on uh, on the white patch there you see on its upper arm. Uh, Paul will be busy recording for posterity all the gauge values once we're on the seabed. Navigation has a checklist. Uh, making sure the vehicles are in the right position and the DVL is associated with the USBL, which will be difficult for them because I have it turned off right now. And, uh, <laughs> uh, probably the, a few other things are really kind of, I know sometimes frustrating for you guys to have to wait another five Yeah, that's okay. Minutes, we'll, we'll pretend to explore. Roger. <laughs> 
And then once all that uh, is done, it'll be uh, <laughs> the van will erupt in complete <laughs> chaos because there'll be eight more people walking in here. Sixteen people will be talking at once. Yeah, let's hope the eight to twelve doesn't become the delivery watch all the time. <laughs> yeah. I think we get the blue water recovery tonight, too. I don't mind. It's going to be, uh, it might be a little spicy. <laughs> fun. Awesome. I'm going to step away, and Justin's going to take over for me so that I can go and have a live interaction. I will see you guys um, later. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Should have put a little more juice in those comps. <laughs> Live and learn. I should know better. Is that video glitch on Atalanta like a slip ring thing, you think? Or No, we think it's the uh, fiber really. If you see in the uh, bottom left quad there in the top right corner of uh, our monitor three, yep. you can see a bluish cable Yep. kind of bouncing around there with the heaves. Ah, uh, yeah. That happens to be the power telemetry and uh, fiber cable. And it seems to be timed with the heave. So it has to be somewhat loose so the camera can move through its range of motion, but perhaps it's a little too loose. A little too loose. So. Actually, the symptoms, it looks like it's losing power, not fiber. But hmm. Yeah, the Fibers don't like to be bent around too much. They are tagged where it comes off the back of the camera. They they wrap around and they're tie wrapped to the camera body itself. Right. So it's in theory not dynamic on the connection point to the camera, but I can see it moving in the background a little bit there. And mm -hmm. I usually put a piece of Velcro around the camera and make it a little bit tighter, but there's a trade off there. You don't want to bend the fiber too tight. And you don't want it too loose, and I'm somewhere between between those two, I think. It seems to be on the heave up. With any luck, that will uh, that won't happen when we uh, when we stop going one knot with Atlanta. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. Oh, there's something cool. Quick, get a capture. <laughs> Um, I've had the uh, Atalanta thrusters off this whole time. Do I want to? Nope. Yeah, you want them off right now. We're we're tail to tail, so yeah. as long as those two headings are opposing, and you're the uh, the aft cameras are showing us each. You're probably about the heading that we're gonna want, though, right? So when I we think so. Bottom. Yeah, as luck would have it. I've been pulling uh, excessively on Atalanta, though it's a little lighter than Argus, so I've moved it like 75 meters away from the vessel. Mm. I'm going to adjust this guy here to uh, 20 meter. I usually keep these boxes on 20 meters. That just gives me, uh, when we're on the seabed, I can see at a glance. The nice place to be. Uh, for maneuverability and the best video is about 20 meters from Atalanta. So that lets the tether come off the back of Atalanta, go down underneath on the weight and then float up on the footballs and then come back to Hurt. If we get too tight, it starts pulling the tail of Hercules around and you'll see the video bounce a little bit uh, too close and the tether can become entangled. What's the uh, weight in water of Atalanta and Argus? Do you know? Atalanta's, I'm not sure what Atalanta is. I can't remember off the top of my head. Argus is uh, just under 5,000 pounds. Atalanta's obviously not as heavy, so in theory we shouldn't have... As much tension. As much tension. But the trade-off there 
if you look at your uh, pitch and roll on Atalanta, mm. it, as it heaves up, it tends to kind of, you know, fall Move. over a little bit. Yeah. Which is uh, not desirable for the 6.8. Or it will um, it will heave up further in free fall, and mm. then it'll be falling as the ship is heaving up, which can and then you get more snap. Yeah, you can get an excessive snap load. So, so far, we're well within the box. It'll be a good uh, note for uh, apples and oranges once we get down to our our depth. Usually, we have close to uh, ten thousand pounds on the wire, mm. static. And, and calm weather when we have uh, Argus. We looked it up last time, now I can't remember. I think it's something like a kilogram per meter for the weight of the 6.8. Mm. You've actually, we've got a couple audience questions related to your current discussion. Um, does diving with Atalanta affect operational capabilities compared to Argus? And is Argus out for this entire expedition? Ah, good questions. Um, the, hopefully the answers to both of those are negative. It should not affect operations. And uh, we have our top scientists and engineers working on putting Argus back together again. Uh, some of the main differences you'll notice is uh, typically Argus sports uh, one of the Zeus cameras, which is the same camera that's on Hercules. And um, Atlanta has a smaller version of that. Still high definition, but uh, Jeff could probably address that better. It doesn't. What doesn't it have, Jeff? It doesn't have the giant lens. It doesn't have to, it's actually a single chip camera. So we don't have nearly the control over it that we do with um, the, the regular Zeus, the HD Zeus. We have a lot of control over the colorimetry, whereas with the mini Zeus, we basically have iris and zoom and focus. And that's it. We can't paint it. And at the moment, we're swearing at it because it's flickering. <laughs> Yeah, it's rather distracting. I'm thinking about turning it off till we're there. Oh, and I apologize. I, I, my name is Justin Umholtz, and I am sitting in for Malanai because she is doing a live ship to shore with a Hawaiian immersion school right now. So, hi, right, Justin. Hi. And just to keep everyone on top of it, we are about ten minutes to bottom. Ten minutes. I, looking for altitude. Switch into altitude mode. I'm just going to turn that DVL back on now, so you're going to probably get the ground fault, but that's Herc's altimeter as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the ground fault's gone away now that it's got a squeeze. Deep for one of those. I must be seeing things. Jeff, can you zoom in just a touch and perk? Thank you. What's the beep? Is that us beeping? I don't think so. Is that a BIOS beep? Nah, it's me. It's a a widget in the system that's not happy. Um, when I'm seeing like Atalanta added altitude bouncing around, that just means it still hasn't seen the bottom yet, or yeah, Roger. It's just noise on the on the altimeter. 
Are you at, uh, I need to slow down a little bit. You're good. Okay. I'll just slow down just a hair here. Click in some auto heading and I, I want to be below you, but just not quite that far below you. If we come down around a 15 meter delta, 20 max, then uh, this. If we did fall me. asleep up here, it would just be a hard landing with Hurricane. You'd have time to stop with. Typically, I'll go um, when we get. Definitely by 100 meters, we should have the stick out and your hand on the yeah on the uh, remove stick lock. And I should uh, be doing the same here. I um this not updating. No, it's trouble. Yeah, if you want to watch something else. It's distracting because I keep looking at it. I had to turn it off because I'm so yeah, yeah. spoiled with the Grafana, all the information in one place. Is that a... Which is actually bad because now I have to spend an extra second brain binder. cell or two to look at my little tiny numbers here. <laughs> it has to, the processing loop has to run three or four more times than it normally Absolutely. does. And after a month out here, each brain cell becomes uh, precious. Well, that couple uh, seconds could be the difference between catching something bad happening and not. Yeah. Like looking out your car window when the deer crosses the road. So we're about 200 meters off the bottom. Yeah, I need to slow down a little more. I'm we must have uh, hit the, it's really strange, the, you hit the different Thermal layers lines, in the, right. in the sea and the, and the effective uh, speed of the vertical velocity of the vehicle really changes. Yeah. Pilot, you have room for another question? Absolutely. All right, there's kind of a combo here. How do the Hercules and Argus sink down through ballast or by engines? And then a second question is, is there any way of introducing resilience in the Atalanta cable to reduce the forces when the ship heaves? Uh, good questions. So um, Hercules is typically ballasted. It has a giant, uh, the giant yellow that you see on Hercules is all syntactic foam or flotation and we shoot for about 50 pounds, pardon the Imperial units, um, positive uh, ballast. So uh, basically Hercules floats and we're thrusting down the whole time uh, to maintain a, a vertical velocity to match uh, Atalanta's, well, other way around, Atalanta's trying to match Hercules' vertical velocity. So. Atlanta is all stainless steel and titanium and hanging on the 6.8. And the, its vertical velocity is being controlled by our attraction winch in the hold there and Paul. And the resilience of the cable, um, it's an armored umbilical, so it has three layers of stainless steel armor on it. And um, its breaking strength is, its working strength is up around in the 30,000 pound range, 30, 40,000, somewhere, basically the weight of a fully loaded semi-truck. Uh, what happens though is the, the, although the cable is very strong, the, the stainless steel uh, wrap on it is kind of like a spring so it can stretch and come back and the uh, high voltage conductors and the fiber inside are not like a spring. They're ductile, so if you stretch a piece of copper, it doesn't stretch back. If you push a spring in, it springs back. So if we stretch it too much, the, we stretch the copper inside. And then when the spring, when the steel springs back, it forces the copper out of the insulation on the jacket and our ground fault detection for the high voltage kicks in and turns out all the lights in here. So that's why we're monitoring, why we're so careful about what tensions we're 
experiencing on the cable. There are ways uh, to remediate that with a, um, if you have uh, what you call an active heave compensated system like Jason has. So the winch is actually has a, a gyro on it and it's adjusting the speed of the pay, pay in and pay out to reduce those tensions or constant tension winch they call it. So I think we are now close to 100 meters off the bottom. Yeah, I'm starting to get some returns in the mesotech there. And uh, the two vehicles are pretty close, still tail to tail, but. Yep, that's what we want. So you see how far they swing back there? Yeah. Because I was pulling on it too hard. Mm, got it. <laughs> the full power of Hercules. <laughs> So we're going to stay quiet so the uh, pilots can focus on this as they get closer to the ground. There was one quick question. There's a little fuzziness in one of the screens. That is actually a little bit of fiber from sisal rope that's on the front deck you're just seeing. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Oh. I was going to say tilt. Yeah, I was going to say tilt down. You can see what you're... Uh, we'll show the whole thing here so I'll get a uh, reference of the seabed coming up. How am I looking here? So I have auto heading clicked in. Um, do we have altitude yet? I have altitude. Looks like you've seen so some ground. DVL is happy. We have four beams on the DVL. Okay, Paul, you can come all stop on the winch. Copy that. Sponge for you, I think. Should I uh, spin Landing around? Right sponge. And let me see where we are. Yeah, you can do DVL reset. I'm all autos off. Yeah, Paul, you're clear to swing around. Why don't you come down? Uh, come down three more meters. Lots of rocks, too. Look at all those rocks. <laughs> I appear to have the hill behind me, which is not as advertised. And that's not, sure a complete that? not a complete surprise, because um, our uh, ship's multi-beam is like, uh, at this depth, it's uh, so, uh, 25 meter resolution. Really quick, is it the forward or aft that's working? Uh, I forget. You can turn them both on. Ooh, you're pulling on me. What's happening there? Uh, I need to come back towards you a little bit. Sorry. <laughs> All right, I will spin around and try to get you in view. What's your, uh, where's your altitude, Argus altitude? Uh, 30. Yeah, come down another five meters. Something's funky here. Ah, that's what's happening. Okay, I need to uh, I need to play with the sonars there. They're they're not right. They're lying to me. What's that? I don't know. Yeah, I think so. I'll just look into the hill here, and we'll uh, come out where. Uh, well, I've got you on. Atlanta can Zeus. see me. Roger. I'm right under you now. Yep. Ooh, look at the cliff. Nice. Do you want me to come up a little bit? If you're going to come on top of that, or? No, I'm just going to come around and uh, I got to play with the sonar there for a minute. So, uh, let me. Now, good time me, for gauges then? Yeah, good time for gauges. I got to press a few buttons here. Copy that. 
the old uh, double tap on auto altitude. I'm going to use a DVL for a minute there, if you're all right with that. What am I doing here, right? I'm cheating. I'm going to come up a little bit then. Is that lens? We're Roger. close. Must be zoomed in. It's not. Yeah, you need to come up a little bit. Yeah, copy <laughs> that's, that. That's full <laughs> wide. That's why I was like, whoa. I'm ready of course, for my as soon as I look away, there goes the deer in front of the truck. Um, I'm not sure I'm believing that. I'm just going to do something here. I'm going to turn off. Oh, <sighs> thank you. I came up, Paul. I'll, I'll come back down. Sorry. Okay, no problem. Should I follow you back down? Yes, please. Sorry, guys. Um, <coughs> we have there's a strange strangeness in the system when I the autos uh, sometimes don't work correctly when they when they're first engaged. You're definitely beating me down. Yep, you can come down another five meters back where I was. Let me try this again and actually watch it for a minute. Stay, Herc, stay. Hey, I'm down in the lounge. I'll come up. Yeah, that's better. Uh, where was I? I'm going to just uh, click off my meso for a minute. Yeah. Now it makes sense, right? Any? So Hercules is on the left. Yeah, you can tell by the, no, the, uh, this one doesn't have an adjustable frequency, this guy does, but this is, uh, sorry, back row, this is taking a little bit longer than uh, normal, we have some uh, strangeness with our sonars here, the whole head upside down, right side up. Left, right, Argus, or Atlanta versus uh, Hercules. I should have caught this before. Are you coming up again, Dan? Shouldn't be. I am. Why are you not staying? Yeah, pilots, definitely work out what you need to work out first. No worries at all. Are you still Working coming up? No, um... Why are you not being nice to me? Rennie, can you deal with the sonars here? So the head, the one on the left should be Hercules, so it's... Yeah, well, the up-down thing is not correct. Sorry, I'm... How'd you do that? Really? Okay. And then Herc should be 10 meter and Argus should be 20. I have those backwards as well.
Hey, Paul, come down uh, right here. I'll just come up the hill a bit. Sorry. You're good. Copy that. Uh, you want your heading to be, let's bring your head to the north, eh? Mine? Yeah. Mm. No, you come down. Come down uh, 10 meters. Some cool corals here. I don't want to leave them behind. Well, Okay, I'll do that if you want to um, turn on the craft comms. Yep. Are, you, are gauges okay? Uh, almost done with them. But they all look, the only one that was not great was the primary comp was yeah, down to three. That's good. good. It's okay. good at three. Um. You got telemetry there yet? Uh, not yet. Oh, now I do. Okay. Craft valve, ready? Yep. Third. Ryan, can you hear me? Um. Can you, are you able to identify what those corals are up there? All right, just give it a little bump again, right? You're gonna wanna bring it out in front of the camera, a little but not away. too close. And um, so Jeff can do a weight balance. So if you put it out yeah, in front of the like porch there, like you're trying to reach for that uh, already, uh, lovely uh, coral in the background. Um, perhaps a and you know the white patch on the upper arm? top part of the screen. Um, it looks, it's hard to tell at this distance, but maybe some chrysogorgid corals as well, which are sort of bottle 